Does that make sense? Now, pause for a second. Put down your pen and think with me. I have dx on dt. The question gave it to me. I want ds on dt. We've seen this many times before. I need to somehow connect these two derivatives together. How am I going to do it? What derivatives could I string together that would give me ds on dt? Okay, we'll start with this one because I actually know what that is. dx on dt. That's known. What do I multiply it by? ds on dx. And our x's will cancel. Okay? Now, this is a really good sign because it now charts the path forward, right? dx on dt, that's given. ds on dx, I need a relationship between x and s that will help me work out what is going on. Like I can then differentiate that and then I can put it in place. Okay? So having a look at the relationship between s and x, it might have helped you if you drew a simpler diagram which sort of teased out all of that, like get LeBron out there, get the lamp out of the way. It's just a pair of triangles, right? Do you see the triangles? Here they are. This is what's really going on, okay? This is two, this is six. You got a couple of right angles here because you assume that LeBron has good posture, thumbs up, okay? Now, I want a relationship between this value and this value, and you might have caught the spoilers from before, what piece of geometry is going to help me with that? It's going to be similar triangles, right? Now, this question is not about similar triangles, so I'm not going to label the proof. I'd have to label everything and start talking about things. If I had lots of time, I would prove it. But can you see what, what relationship, something over something equals something else over something else, what's going to capture the geometry here and put s and x in the same equation? Six over two. Okay, so I could say I could say six over two, six over two. That's a big side compared to a little side, a big triangle, little triangle. So what's the corresponding length in this same big triangle? It's the whole length, right? X plus S is on the top. What's on the bottom? Whatever you happen to have called it. I called it S for shadow, because at least I can remember it that way. Okay? There's a bit of simplification that can happen, so that's nice. Uh, what am I going to get here? Bless you. 3S equals X plus S. Do you see how quickly the relationship fell out? Which step was this? Have a think back. I gave you three this morning. Do you remember in our overall strategy? This is step two. We've got all of the variables and constants. We know what to do with them, but this is the equation, the measurement, the geometry that helped us connect all the dots. Right? Uh, let's just tidy this up. I want ds on dx, so I guess I should have s in terms of x. Yeah. So I've got 2s equals that, s equals that. You happy with that? So what's this going to be? That derivative, ds on dx. It's just a half. That's nice and easy, right? So I can just say, ta-da, ds on dx equals a half. You okay with that? So, what can we do here? Can someone, would someone be so bold as to try and help me work out? It looks like we've actually answered b before we've answered a, and that's fine. If I just say b here, right? ds on dt. That was what I was trying to solve. What's it equal to? Okay, um, hold on. Where are we? dx on dt first, because that's what I had from the question, which is just 1. And I think it's important to write 1, even though it doesn't change the answer. It shows I understand where this is coming from. Multiplied by a half. So I can interpret that. That means that the shadow is growing at half a meter per second. Are you happy with that? OK, can we rewind now? Can we answer A? Does anyone, you don't have to call it out, but I'm wondering, does anyone have an answer for A? Yeah? Yeah, no? Okay, so we can do this a bunch of different ways. We can think about this intuitively, if you like. How much is this growing by, this shadow? Every second, how much is it growing by? Half a meter, right? But in addition to it growing by half a meter every second, it's also moving, right? It doesn't stay still. Where is it going? What direction is it going in? It's going in the same direction that it's growing. Does that make sense? So it moves at one meter per second that way, and it also gets bigger at a half a meter per second, right? So what's the total that you expect in terms of that tip moving? One and a half meters altogether, right? So that's a way you can intuitively think about that. 
How do I write that down? Well, what's the derivative? Here's the derivative you were searching for for a. What is the derivative, sorry, for b. What's the derivative I'm searching for for a? What is this whole length? This whole length here. It's, well, the way I've drawn it over there, it's the, it's the change in x plus s, right? There's um, where LeBron is and that's where his shadow is. And I'm comparing that with time. Do you agree with that? It's a bit weird. We don't usually see this written like this because, you know, all these weird things up there. But it's just a number. Just like that's a number and that's a number and that's a number. Okay. Now, we actually know what s is in terms of x, don't we? Have a look. There it is. It's x on 2, right? So can't I write it like this? It's just substitution. Are you happy with that? Thumbs up. And I know how to combine those two. That's uh, 3 on 2 times x. How's your brain so far? Have I done everything is okay at the moment? Now, you know when you write, you don't have to write this down, you know when you write dy and dx? You're used to thinking of that as just like a fraction, rise over run, okay? But you can just as easily write that rather than just as a fraction. You can write it as an operator, right? Do you remember when we first introduced the differential operator? As an operator applied to a function, yeah? Like these mean the same thing. You can see if, if it wanted to, the y could just hop up the top like that, okay? I can do the same thing here. It's written as a fraction right now, but I'm going to rewrite it as an operator applied to what function? Three on two, Three on two times x. But you know, one of the handy things about um, differentiating, right, is when you've got constant coefficients, what difference do they make to the derivative? What difference do they make? Like, do you have to use product rule on this because 3 on 2 times x? You don't, do you? The, the constant coefficient just hang out the front if you wanted. 3 on 2, right, it's just a constant coefficient, times what's left behind? dx on dt. But you know what that is, don't you? Right? dx on dt is just 1. And there's that one and a half meters per second that you told me to begin with through your intuition. Okay? There's lots of ways to illustrate that one. That's just a particular way. Um, but I like that it pushes you to think about what all this differentiation means. So, how's your head doing? Um, all these questions early on, they're like, wow, I've never seen anything like this. Who thought to use similar triangles? Well, some of you did, some of you didn't, it wasn't so obvious. But now that you've seen them, you're going to be a lot more able to recognize them in the future. Does anyone have any questions?